Good morning. I'm Tim Stewart from AI Tech. I'm the Director of Business Development. It's my first conference. Apparently, I'm supposed to start with a boat story, <laughs> which is a problem because I'm not a sailor. And, and how can I top sailing at night, open water, big waves, little boat? I mean, how, how can I top that? The Lego Titanic is their largest and most complicated model with over 9,000 parts. I'm building it, and I should be done next weekend. <laughs> I'm happy to be here to talk about leveraging artificial intelligence to enable decision superiority. It's going to be a little bit different than the presentations you've seen so far. Uh, it's going to build on them, certainly. You know, Jake and Simon tee things up you know, wonderfully from my presentation. Uh, but it's going to be coming at it from a different point of view. Uh, one of the things that's going to be a little bit different about it is that it's based on a white paper uh, that I presented at GVSATS in August. Uh, the ground vehicle systems engineering and technology shows is one of the largest ground vehicle shows in North America, um, mostly centered around uh, US Army capabilities and requirements for ground vehicles. So I'm going to be going through a lot of these things quickly. Um, but know that there's a 10-page white paper that uh, I presented uh, behind these slides that you're uh, free <laughs> to, uh, to look at and uh, refer to. We're unfortunate um, in our specific area of uh, artificial intelligence and uh, capabilities uh, for uh, ground vehicles in that the Department of Defense does a pretty good job uh, from a high level uh, defining their view on how sensors, shooters, and the connectivity between them. They do this under an initiative called JADC2, the Joint All Domain Command and Control. Um, so notice a couple things. It's, uh, it's a DOD initiative. Uh, so it's not Army, it's not Navy, it's not Air Force, it's, it's all of them, it's the DOD. Um, so it's a good initiative from a high level point of view because from the very top down, it tells you how the organizations are thinking about how to connect sensors and processing. <clears throat> um, I will refer to uh, JADC2 a little bit later on uh, in the presentation in a little bit more detail. Um, shared intelligence. Uh, in uh, talking about um, uh, collaboration on future conflicts, um, even though JADC2, from a Department of Defense point of view, talks about from a high level how to connect things, what their view is, it doesn't go into a lot of detail on how to do it. And one of the innovations of this white paper, it talks about some of the pieces uh, on how to actually do what the high level vision of JADC2 talks about. Uh, and uh, certainly uh, I'll identify as part of that the technical uh, challenges uh, with the pieces that go into JADC2. Uh, and then I'll talk about the specific technical solutions uh, from an industry, academic, uh, and from our coalition partners. <coughs> Technological challenges. <coughs> One of the technical challenges is that the definition on superior decisions uh, isn't, isn't well defined. And, and one of the innovations of, of what I'm going to be talking about here uh, is how, how to do that. How do, you, how do you decide whether or not a decision uh, is superior? Um, it's pretty black and white when you're getting shot at. But in general, how do you evaluate superior decisions? And even though my presentation here talks about specific ground vehicles and US Army applications, you'll see that a lot of the concepts and innovations are broadly applicable. And I'll point out specifically a question uh, earlier about how do you ensure safety on these systems uh, being broadly applicable? And I'll mention that as part of the slides coming up. Um, the uh, enterprise-wide approaches in multi-domain operations. Um, and as mentioned before, Jake uh, talked about the, the large amount of uh, data. The, the sensors are getting much better. They're acquiring more data, and they're doing it faster. So there's a lot of data. And part of uh, the challenge, as Jake and Simon pointed out earlier, is what do you do with the data? Um, the stakeholders are different areas um, for the, the mission execution. 
Uh, again, this was mentioned earlier, this idea of the domains and the information necessary within a domain uh, to make the superior decisions. So the segmenting and the sharing of information specifically within the groups uh, is one of the technical challenges. Uh, and by the by, you've, all, you've got to do this in a secure environment. Because when you're in a fluid environment, like uh, uh, being in a ground vehicle getting shot at, you can't have any cybersecurity risks or uh, threats. And keep in mind, in such a situation, it's not necessary to eliminate uh, the communication. All you got to do is disrupt it. One of the ways, uh, as I asked before, is how, how do you evaluate whether or not a decision is superior? And as I mentioned before, if you're, uh, if you're uh, in a combat situation, it's pretty black and white. But in general, how do you do that? And one of the ways we suggest in the white paper is this thing called the ODA loop, um, the Observe, Orient, Decide, Action Loop. Um, that's a, a well-known uh, decision-making uh, process. And Quite simply and straightforward, the way you can evaluate whether or not your decisions are superior is whether or not you're going through the ODA loop faster than your competitor. Whoever goes through the ODA loop faster in general wins. And the thing about the ODA loop is that you can go down to a level is where. Where in the ODA loop are, are they better? Are they better at observing? Are they better at orienting and deciding what the information is? Are they better at taking action uh, or and making decisions? Or are they better at action? Um, so the ODA loop provides the basis by which you can decide whether or not decisions are superior. Are you going through the ODA loop faster? If you are, or if you're not, where? Analyzing risks uh, in such a fluid environment. Oh, I forgot to mention. The thing about the ODA loop um, and decisions in, in general is that they're not single decisions, okay? <laughs> Especially like in the environment and the example that we're talking about now, uh, it's a fluid environment. You are making decisions continuously, okay? And that's the basis by which you can decide whether or not those decisions consistently over time are superior. Because it's not, it's not one decision that you have to make. It's not that one decision that you have to make to, to, to make sure that it's superior, but it's a whole stream of them. Analyzing risks. The analyzing risks, um, uh, there are a couple of key points uh, about analyzing risks that you know, might not be completely obvious. And that is, is if, and certainly in future conflicts, uncrewed vehicles are gonna be used more. Uh, the time is coming when uncrewed systems are going to be uh, engaged you know, without out people. Um, and there are risks uh, involved with uh, having that environment, uh, having, uh, having it be a mixed environment than having it be a pure environment. So just the unmanned vehicle aspect is a risk that has to be analyzed and carefully understood. As I mentioned before, it's in such an environment, the secure uh, data transmission, you've got to make sure that the, um, for cybersecurity reasons, that the data transmission, you know, not only within the vehicle, but outside the vehicle and into the, the command uh, headquarters, outside the area domains, uh, is secure. Uh, and the interoperability. Um, it's clear from the examples that we've had uh, right now with the conflicts in the world that future conflicts will be multi-domain and coalition-based, no question. Um, so we have to address not only the interoperability questions, uh, but also um, the, the coalition aspects uh, and all the complexity that comes along with that. And again, in the case of uh, combat and uh, <laughs> being in harm's way, the, the failure to address these is, is obvious. Um, and, and very costly. Um, we are fortunate again uh, with JADC2, but also um, with um, the case of Project Convergence. Um, Project Convergence uh, is a US Army program that talks about its uh, future capabilities. 
And one of the things that the Army did quite well in Project Convergence and does well in general is use cases. Uh, it was talked about a little bit earlier in some of the presentations about um, a use case. Um, as part of Project Convergence, the Army did a great job of defining <laughs> 15 uh, use cases, very specific things uh, that units with the Army do. Um, so we, we are fortunate to be able to take use of that and pick a couple of use cases and say, in this use case, this specific use case, what does AI make a difference on? Um, and this is one of the aspects that I mentioned before that's broadly applicable. Uh, there was a question about how do we ensure these systems are, are safely deployed? And I will submit that one way to do that is to have use cases that are as well-defined as the ones in Project Convergence. And then you answer the question, what difference does it make? Uh, and go through that analysis and evaluation. I include this one, so when we uh, began this work, uh, there are 12 use cases, 12 is too many. Um, we enlisted uh, an expert uh, to help us narrow down uh, the use cases. And it was an interesting experience just from that aspect because this uh, retired 06 uh, tanker uh, who fought in the Iraq war picked off three use cases and they weren't the ones that I would have picked or uh, expected. This was one of them. This use case is called wet gap crossing. It's like crossing a river. And it's, you know, you, you would think that, you know, armies have been doing that, you know, you know since, since armies were formed. And you'd think that that would be uh, a straightforward uh, thing and well understood. It turns out it's not. It's a very complicated um, process for an army group of any size to get across a river. And that's one of the use cases. This is the level of detail that I'm talking about in terms of generally applied use cases for specific applications. What difference does it make in this use case? Unless you think this is an academic exercise, there's a recent example from the Ukraine where a unit was caught out in the open not doing wet gap crossing well. And they paid a terrible price for it, hundreds of people died. So use cases is one of those things that we can use <laughs> to address and answer the question, what difference does this make? Uh, AI at the edge, um, processing um, data across the OTA loop. Um, we talked about this a little bit earlier, the idea of the sensors and the processors being close to one another and then connecting everything together. Um, another uh, aspect for optimizing ground vehicle uh, operations is uh, TSN, uh, time sensitive networking uh, and enhanced cybersecurity. <clears throat> this has been talked about before as specifically as, uh, as vendors. You know, the, the idea that in order to um, process AI data, you've got to have horsepower. You've got to have CPU horsepower uh, in order to be able to run the AI applications and do interesting, uh, interesting things. Um, the thing about uh, GPGPUs, general purpose <laughs> graphics processing units, is that they're highly parallel. And the AI application as itself lends itself greatly to parallelism. So lest we uh, uh, lose sight of what we're talking about here, this is a rugged, embedded AI supercomputer. Uh, has a <coughs> NVIDIA Xavier card in it, tops out about 10, uh, 10 tops, weighs a couple of pounds, 15 watts. This is what we're talking about in terms of AI at the edge. You can do interesting things with this close to the sensor when it's appropriate. Time sensitive networking, we've all had this experience, the network's slow, okay? In a lot of cases, the network gets slow when there's a lot of traffic, okay? And when there's a lot of traffic, when you're in a ground vehicle getting shot at, that's a lousy time for the network to be slow. So time-sensitive network is, quote, unquote, deterministic. 
it's very similar to, to Ethernet, but it guarantees delivery of messages in a set amount of time. That's why it's, it's important uh, and has uh, uh, capabilities over and above regular Ethernet. It gets your messages, it guarantees your messages and traffic gets there in a set amount of time. Uh, Cybersecurity, uh, enhanced safeguard uh, to uh, prevent attacks uh, and protect uh, information and data sharing on links. As we mentioned before, it's not only within the system, not only within the vehicle, but it's going to be within the unit, a brigade or a platoon. And not only that, it's going to be at a higher level and then at the higher levels, the coalition partners with their organizations and similarly, uh, and their or, uh, size and organizations of uh, armed forces is going to be also there. So the cybersecurity uh, uh, within the system and outside the system uh, and out into coalition partners is a, is a major concern. Fashionable digital transformation, prototyping, and systems integration by leveraging existing data. It's one of the nice things, it was mentioned earlier about AI in terms of machine learning, uh, and you have to have data sets, you have to have information uh, for the machine to learn, okay? The th nice thing about that is that that information is, exists. Uh, you have to make use of it, and it's uh, um, a good way to do that uh, and start of uh, reinventing everything. Um, and then fostering experimentation and learning for, learning for success. Um, the continued collaboration between the organizations at a high level, uh, the DOD uh, with its uh, JADC2, uh, very high level definition of what sensors and shooters uh, should be doing and how they should be doing it. But not filling in all the, the, the blanks on, you know, do this, do that. Um, the technology, as we mentioned before, as in AI, GPGPUs and TSN are, are for industry to uh, fill in uh, based on you know, their expertise. Uh, and then employing um, AI, machine learning, advanced algorithm systems uh, to provide a significant advantage in achieving decision superiority. And as I mentioned before, the, the key innovation in the presentation and, and the white paper is not just achieving decision superiority, uh, but also being able to measure it um, through the aspect of the OTA loop that I had mentioned before.